Holy moly, stop the presses, there is a news flash, Tenant Talks returns, I am of course your host, the Maniac Matt Tenant, and after a busy few weeks of work and play, wink wink, I've been from Cardiff to Manchester, down to London, Wembley Stadium, and now I'm finally back home, there is no rest for the wicked, as they say. It has been an equally busy few weeks uh, in the news for NXT UK for European wrestling as a whole. And so without further ado, let's get into it. These are this week's main stories. And we start off with some sad news this week on Tenant Talks. For fans of British independent wrestling, the name Defiant Wrestling will be familiar to all of you. Unfortunately, last month we learned that Defiant Wrestling is no more. The company held their final show on June the 29th, Built to Destroy, and then in August sadly announced their closure. For those who don't know who Defiant Wrestling were, they came into existence in June 2016 using WhatCulture.com and WhatCulture's YouTube channel to air their weekly television shows. It featured the best of British, the best American talent around the world, obviously the best European talent there was. These included the likes of Drew McIntyre, who competed for Defiant Wrestling slash What Culture Pro Wrestling under the name Drew Galloway, Martin Kirby, Cody, Kurt Angle. The promotion even helped the likes of Travis Banks, Jay Melrose, Killian Dane. And Bea Priestley, they all got a foot in the, the UK independent scene door because of what culture slash defiant wrestling. And they, of course, were the company that gave Pete Dunne one of his you know first big breaks. When what culture pro wrestling closed, when they said, we can't do it anymore, it's not financially viable, defiant wrestling took over. They rebranded WCPW as Defiant Wrestling. They took the reins. And on December the 4th, 2017, under the guidance of WrestleTalk's head writer and my former boss, James Dixon, they took the independent scene here in Britain by storm. And they were very, very successful. A lot of names now, a lot of NXT UK names now, would not be as successful or as well recognised, and some of them might not even be in the professional wrestling industry if it wasn't for Defiant Wrestling. Make no mistake about it, this is very, very sad news, especially for all the fans of British independent wrestling. You've got your Progress, you've got your ICW over here, you know, you've got your other promotions, but Defiant Wrestling, it was... it was a... it was a diamond in the rough. There are so many underrated matches out there put on by Defiant so many great shows and now British wrestlers won't have that home to go to they won't have that stage to you know stand on to to start their careers on and it is a crying shame I I do think this is a sign of things to come maybe for the British independent scene with NXT UK plundering so much talent, and of course, the Wednesday Night Wars, which of course NXT UK are involved in as well, as they air on the network on a Wednesday night. People are classing the Wednesday Night War as NXT versus AEW. You've got to consider that NXT UK also airs on Wednesday night, and will be vying for a share, or a portion at least, of that uh, audience which means NXT UK is going to need even more British talent, if anything. And I know they can go elsewhere, etc. But I just think that people weren't willing to pay to see wrestlers they could see on the network anymore. And James Dixon decided that Defiant Wrestling wasn't profitable enough. And doors are closed. I think we can now consider Defiant Wrestling as the first casualty of the Wednesday Night War. It's fine if you disagree with me. But either way, 
it has become collateral damage and I sincerely hope that more British independent promotions don't follow suit because that would be a crying shame. NXT UK promised like not to kill the British independent scene when it when it arrived and one of its major players behind progress and ICW obviously has already become collateral damage. And on a personal note, I would just like to say to everyone listening to this, if you've never seen Defiant Wrestling, do look up their shows on YouTube. Some of them are free to watch. There's some free matches on their YouTube channel, if the YouTube channel still exists, I think it does. But do take the time to search the web. Search the internet for some Defiant Wrestling matches and you won't be disappointed. They're, they're very, very good. Some of the stuff, you know, was Kurt Angle's last great run as a wrestler. Drew Galloway, he had some wonderful matches. Even Joseph Connors, who regular listeners of Union Smack know I'm not a fan of, had some of his best years as a professional wrestler in Defiant. And before that, what culture? So, very, very, very sad news. And I would just like to take the time to say thank you to Defiant Wrestling for a lot of good memories, for a lot of great matches. You'll be sadly, sadly missed. Just when you thought it was safe to go back into the international wrestling waters, WWE do it again. In place of NXT TakeOver... The night before the Raw Rumble in January. Instead it has been announced and confirmed. I must add. That another Worlds Collide tournament. Will be aired instead. This obviously has everything to do with NXT. Going live on the USA Network. Scheduling crisis. And conflicts obviously. They have more takeovers planned for 2020. But in this instance. There won't be one in January of next year. Instead, Worlds Collide returns. I have no idea why the first two were absolutely awful. I know they had their fans. I know some people who listened to Union Smack loved the Worlds Collide tournaments, both of them. However, they weren't for me. I know they weren't for Travis. We reviewed them both. Um, on Union Smack, so do go back and take a look and a listen at them. But as per January and April's offerings, these will feature stars from Raw, SmackDown, NXT, NXT UK, which is why we are featuring it here. And I think if this is going to work this time around, if this is really going to be a, a worthy successor, to an NXT takeover, then something major, something drastic has to happen. This cannot go on a, a major pay-per-view platform if that's what they're planning on doing with it in the current state that it, it's in. It's wrestlers fighting each other from different brands for no real reason, for no prize, there's no story to it. If they're going to be serious about this, this has to be done in the vein of a King of the Ring tournament. This has to have several weeks beginning in December and slowly leading up to the Royal Rumble weekend in January. It has to be a King of the Ring-esque elimination tournament, grandiose in style. It has to feature some of the best talent from Raw, SmackDown, NXT, NXT UK. It can't just feature people who haven't been on television for a while or wrestlers who can't get a good spot. You have to take six of the best from each brand. And I'm not talking about the likes of Rollins and Reigns, etc. They'll all have their you know different storylines going into the Raw Rumble. But five or six of the best from each brand who have no real story going into Raw Rumble weekend. 
and have them compete in a memorable, great King of the Rings style World Collide tournament. With the quarterfinals, the semifinals and the finals all happening on one night. This could be your new King of the Ring pay-per-view. This could be the thing that draws, you know, lapsed fans back. And we all know WWE can put on a great tournament. I've not watched it personally, but I've heard nothing but great things about the King of the Ring tournament that has just passed that Baron Corbin won. So they are capable of doing it. The other thing I wanted to mention here, the other drawback, is NXT UK itself. The stars just aren't popular enough in America right now. And that was evident during the last two Worlds Collide tournaments and the last two NXT UK television tapings in America. There was very little reaction for any of the stars, apart from Pete Dunne, obviously. People didn't care. There was library silence. A lot of it was just played out to crickets. So if this is your plan, if you're planning on staging this big Worlds Collide tournament at the end of January, or whenever 2020 Royal Rumble weekend is, you have to start building your NXT UK stars to an American audience now. Because you've got a few months to really make people care, and it's not an easy job. It's really not an easy job. And WWE... Triple H mostly, has taken steps already to remedy this. He's included uh, NXT UK stars on NXT live events. We mentioned that in issue one of Tenant Talks. He has brought Imperium to NXT live on the USA Network. More on that to come later on. So he's really started to ingrain the British stars on an American audience, bit by bit, and I really do hope that this time it succeeds, because if you take that structure, like I said, of a King of the Ring tournament, and you apply it to this, and you give the winner a title shot of the main title on their brand, obviously the Raw and SmackDown stars don't have to win it, But imagine how big it could be for someone like Zach Gibson. Imagine a final fought between somebody like Zach Gibson and Roderick Strong for a shot at the NXT or WWE United Kingdom Championship. It could be absolutely massive and it could put the stars on a a different plateau. So I really, really hope that they do this properly. And don't just half ass it like they have done before. Some more sad news now, at least for your host. I say sad, it's more tragic. Rumours of Pete Dunne leaving NXT UK and heading off to NXT full time have been circulating right the way back to October 2018 when NXT UK sprang to life on the WWE Network. Unfortunately, and with a tear in my eye, I can confirm that Pete Dunn is headed to NXT full-time. Pete Dunn has packed his bags, he's packed his girlfriend, he's packed his daughter, and the trio are on their way to live in America for X amount of time. We do not know how long they're going to be there. I would say with Pete Dunn's popularity in America, and obviously Vince McMahon supposedly being a fan Pete Dunne's going to be there for the next 10 15 years at least at least and let's be honest who wouldn't build a brand around Pete Dunne who wouldn't put the top title on Pete Dunne and say to their creative team keep him flowing you know keep him chugging over and we have got gold this was confirmed Pete Dunne's departure I should say was confirmed by the man himself at progress chapter 95 still chasing on september the 15th pete dunn issued an open challenge for his return and farewell to progress and british wrestling in general 
The open challenge was answered by the terrifically talented Cara Noir. And after the match, Pete Dern took to the microphone and said this, signing off from British Wrestling. A few months ago, I promised you all that independent wrestling will survive and it's in safe hands. Well, I'm wrong, but if he's anything to go by, I think it's a pretty safe bet. Now you might be seeing me for a while, I'm going abroad, I've got things to do. But I'm going to make a promise to each and every one of you. This isn't my swan song for independent wrestling. Progress, fight club pro, attack and many others. They'll always hold a special place in my heart. And when I do get back, Cara, let's do a rematch. Yeah. It's a bitter pill to swallow. It really is. This man who who built up NXT UK, who, the founding father, if you like. I know they say that a lot about Trent Seven and Tyler Bay also, but when you think of what Pete Dunn has, has done, no pun intended, for NXT UK and for the United Kingdom Championship, then this is just really, a, it's a kick in the balls for anyone who loves him like I do. And it is a heavy loss, it really is. But it's been coming since he lost the title to Walter. And if I'm being completely honest, and I I don't want to say this, obviously, but if I'm being absolutely honest, then Pete Dunne no longer needs NXT UK. And it crushes me to say it. Of course it does. But the brand has also grown without his presence. There was a time when... NXT UK was Pete Dunne, and Pete Dunne was NXT UK. Now the two have they've tailed off on a fork road. Pete Dunne no longer needs the brand, and the brand has grown into something else without him. And it, again, it, it's just, it churns my stomach to say so. However, I will say, that when people look back on the history of the United Kingdom Championship in 50 years, there's only one man they'll credit for putting it on the map. I don't want people to listen to this and think that Pete Dunne's contribution has been anything less than marvellous or fantastic. Because even those words don't do it justice. You know? I can't sit here and tell you what Pete Dunn has accomplished in professional wrestling because there's not enough time. It it goes deeper than championships and and victories. I've been watching this product for 30 years this year. It's a long time. Too long. I've seen the good come, I've seen the bad go. And somewhere along the way, over the last few years because of the the main roster, I lost faith in professional wrestling. I I did. And then along came Pete Dunne, and he made me believe again. And I know I'm not the only one. I know that a lot of people, you know, looked to Pete Dunne as the saviour, the last hope for their love of professional wrestling. And he took us, And he took us on a massive journey. He made a title that no one really cared about in 2017. Prestigious. Because there were many people saying that the United Kingdom Championship 
in two, three years' time would go the way the European Championship did, uncared about, given to Americans to make fun of. But he took that title and he said, no, that ain't going to happen. This is going to be the most prestigious championship in the entire company. And if I have to break my back every night for nearly two years to make sure people look at this title, to make sure people look at the brand it will eventually represent as something worth watching and something meaningful, then that's what I'm going to do. And he did. He did. As soon as that title was strapped around his waist, or should we say, slotted in between his teeth, people sat up, people took notice, and people who had never seen British wrestling suddenly started to take an interest in it because of Pete Dunne. To me, that is worth more than championships. It's worth more than a million victories. That right there is a legacy. And NXT UK and indeed the United Kingdom Championship is Pete Dunne's legacy in British wrestling. I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss seeing him on NXT UK. I'm going to miss seeing him on the British Independence. But Pete, I love you. I wish you nothing but the best of luck in America. And from myself and from everybody on the British shores, thank you very much and goodbye, sir. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, and some of you might be, I don't, I don't know your, your habitat or your, your living arrangements, you will not have failed to hear about British wrestler Josh Bodum and his antics, which not only caused harm to another human being, but supposedly made him retire and quit professional wrestling for good. On August the 30th at Rev Pro Wrestling Summer Sizzler 2019, Josh Bodum and Shah Samuels, the undisputed British tag team champions, took on Aussie Open in the final of the Road to Royal Quest Tag Team Tournament Final. Of course, the winners would get to go to New Japan Pro Wrestling Royal Quest and challenge the Gorillas of Destiny for the IWGP Tag Team Championships. Now, Aaron Wilde, the referee, mistakenly counted the pinfall when, I believe it was Josh Bodum, it might have been Shah, Shah Samuels, but I'm sure it was Josh Bodum, was meant to kick out, and thus the match will continue. Wilde made a mistake, he counted the three, he ended the match early, not maliciously at all, it was just a simple error. Bodum and Samuels then completely lost the fucking plot. Absolutely gone. They saw red. They legitimately attacked the referee. They beat Andy Wilde so bad on the outside of the ring. It not only disgusted fans and fellow professional wrestlers alike. Pete Dunne took to Twitter about this. But Andy Wilde came out a few days later and revealed that the beating was so severe that it had forced him to retire from professional wrestling. That's not right. You know, whatever you think about professional wrestling, how fake it is or how predetermined things might be, whatever your view is on this industry, and there might be some people who have stumbled across this podcast and don't know anything about wrestling and have a preconceived idea, the fact that a man got physically beaten and decided that it was it was so bad he just couldn't face returning to the ring. He couldn't face returning to an industry that made him a living and that he loves. It's just pathetic and it's wrong. Not only that, 
Josh Bowden, the cheek of this man, not only did he literally assault another man, and, and get away with it, I've heard no reports to say that Josh Bowden was arrested or Josh Bowden was questioned by police. Nothing like that. But the sheer gall of this pathetic little prick, he took to Twitter and, like a spoiled child, vented his frustrations at everyone else who was having a go at him. Absolutely laid the blame at everyone else's door other than his. And then, like a, you know, like a child who couldn't get what he wanted, he went on Instagram and announced his retirement from the industry. And not one person cared. Absolutely not one person looked at Josh Bodum's tantrum and went, oh no, what a shame. Now, if you don't know who Josh Bodum is, he's actually quite a talented wrestler from Bournemouth in the United Kingdom. Um, this is not the first time, however, that he's done something like this. He's absolutely notorious in Great Britain on the professional wrestling scene for his tantrums, for acting up, for acting out, for speaking out even. He was blacklisted by several British indie promotions over here in the United Kingdom. He was even thrown off of a AJPW tour in 2018 for his terrible attitude and unprofessional behaviour. So this isn't the first time he has done something like this. Now, RevPro did feel like they needed to speak out after this took place. And rightly so. You know, it happened under their banner. The mistake was made by their referee, but at the same time, the assault was carried out by a wrestler under contract with them. As far as Shah Samuels is concerned, the statement made by RevPro Wrestling did include the fact that he will face internal discipline and he is now on a zero tolerance with RevPro. So should this happen again? Not that me or anyone else believes it will because he is a consummate professional and in his words he was only trying to protect the referee and obviously kayfabe as well. Josh Bodum is a different story though. Showing no sign of care for a fellow human being or taking no responsibility for his actions, RevPro decided to strip him and Samuels of the undisputed British Tag Team Championships and quite quickly came to the decision that they would terminate Bodum's contract. As far as I'm concerned, as far as many in the industry are concerned, it's good riddance to bad rubbish. If he never wrestles again, who cares? He's just killed his own promising career and he's got no one else to blame but himself, even though he, he probably will. And let's be honest, even if he didn't retire, there'd be very, very few places left for him to go now. In other news, Irish star Session Moth Martina has signed a full-time contract with Ring of Honor. I know what you're thinking. It's amazing in 2019 that Ring of Honor can afford to sign anyone new to a full-time contract. But they have signed the OTT star, the former ICW women's champion, nonetheless. This comes after Martina attended WWE tryouts at the UK Performance Centre in June. She was very impressive in the tryouts. It was thought she would sign with NXT UK. However, she actually rejected the WWE contract and signed with Ring of Honor instead. This contract, I believe, allows her to continue her great work with stardom. It allows her to continue to take bookings in and out of Europe. It will obviously allow her to stay with OTT in Ireland. So this was probably the better offer for her as far as where else she can work. 
Obviously, if she signed with NXT UK, she probably wouldn't be allowed to work with Stardom to the extent that she is. She wouldn't be allowed to work against AEW wrestlers. But now she's got she's got freedom in what she can do. I'm sure at some point she will come to NXT UK. But she wants to discover what else is out there first. And we here at Union Smack wish her the very best of luck. On September the 9th, it came to light that WWE was thinking of adding a mid-card championship to NXT UK. Now, rumours have persisted for quite a while that this was going to happen, and fans have been calling for it. However, recent revelations via Twitter, a very reliable source on Twitter, I must add also, has come out and said that whilst one idea was to create a new championship called the Eurocontinental Championship, WWE are fond of the idea of bringing the European Championship out of retirement. The European Championship was last seen in 2002, to my best recollection, and it's the best option. By far, it's the best option. NXT UK is full of British and European stars. So what better title to have as your second most important championship than the European title? And the mid-card scene in NXT UK right now, it's strong. Just watch any of the two takeovers from Blackpool or Cardiff. You'll see that the undercard is it's really strong. The only thing it's suffering from right now is a a lack of prize. You know, men like Travis Banks and Noam Dar and Trent Seven, they're, they're fighting for nothing. And that title could do someone the world of good if it's made as prestigious as the United Kingdom and the tag team titles. I'm all for it. I know fans are all for it. Nothing's been decided yet. They may go with something completely different. They may decide to withdraw it and not have a mid-card title at all. But we will keep you updated should we hear anything else. Tony Storm has been back in the news recently. Firstly, it was heavily rumoured by Dave Meltzer take that with a pinch of salt, and by many other professional wrestling outlets that Tony Storm's absence from NXT UK and, of course, her loss to Kaylee Ray in Cardiff now means that the Australian star will be heading stateside to join NXT on a regular basis. This, of course, comes after NXT have joined the USA Network and are going live every week. They need star power for their division. They've now got Rhea Ripley. They've, of course, got Shayna Baszler, who may be on her way to the main roster, depending on which dirt sheet or room you believe. But Tony Storm would certainly bolster those ranks and make the NXT women's division a lot more viable because women like Mia Yim and even Bianca Belair right now and Aaliyah and Vanessa Bourne just aren't what the division needs. A figurehead like Tony Storm, who fingers crossed would put more into it than she did her, her NXT UK career, would be a an absolute great fit. Now let's be honest, there's nothing left for her to do in NXT UK. She's been NXT UK Women's Champion. It's very, very unlikely that she'll get another another shot. You know, another another turn at the wheel. And like I said before, her run wasn't all that interesting. I know people loved it, but she did little with the title. Uh, they did little with her because they had nothing to do. So I think a fresh start would do Tony Storm wonders. The other reason Tony Storm was in the news this week was because it came to light via Tony's... Twitter and Instagram page 
that she's once again dating Mustache Mountain and British Strong Style member Tyler Bate. Now, the two dated several years back, but broke up because the rumour has it that Tyler was caught sexting a transvestite and Storm promptly ended the relationship. Um, <laughs> fucking unbelievable, isn't it? You've got Tony Storm there at your beck and call. Arguably one of the most beautiful women in the world. And you go and sext a transvestite. For fuck's sake, Tyler, use your brain, son. Anyway, pictures resurfaced of the two on Tony's social media accounts. And the two are believed to be very much in love once again. We don't know if it will last. If Tony's going to America, like some of the reports say, then it's going to be a hell of a a long-distance relationship. But do you know what? If they're happy, then... I, we, we wish them all the best. Absolutely do. Because happiness is hard to find in this life. So if you find it. Or if you find a girl like Tony Storm. Gentlemen. Keep hold of her. On September the 13th. It was announced that the Scottish supernova Noam Dar would return to his home in Insane Championship Wrestling to participate over both nights of the company's Fear and Loathing event on November 2nd and November 3rd. Though no opponent has been announced for Noam Dar just yet, Wolfgang and Joe Coffey will also compete on the card, with Wolfgang challenging bad boy Liam Thompson for the ICW0D Championship on night one, and Joe Coffey battling Stevie Boy for the ICW World Heavyweight Championship on night two. On September the 15th, Progress held Chapter 59, still chasing from the Alexandra Palace in London. Notable results from that event were... Jordan Devlin and Scotty Davis defeated the Grizzled Young Veterans and Aussie Open to capture the Progress Tag Team Championships. Pete Dunn defeated Cara Noir in a special Open Challenge match. Mustache Mountain defeated the Limitless Brothers, Matt Riddle and Keith Lee, who had been lent to Progress from NXT. Danny Luna, Ilya Dagonov. Dan Maloney, Millie McKenzie, Sid Scarlett and Travis Banks all competed in the Battle Royal to crown the first ever Progress Proteus champion. That was won by Paul Robinson. And in the main event, a returning Eddie Dennis, if you remember, he tore his pectoral muscle. A returning Eddie Dennis defeated Walter and David Starr to capture the Progress Unified World Championship and Dennis was accompanied by Mark Andrews. And finally, on this week's Tenant Talks, Imperium made their NXT debut as a faction. They have all been on NXT separately before. On the first ever live episode to air on the USA Network on September the 18th, the faction derailed a match between Kushida and Denzel Dejeuner and put the locker room on notice before Kushida attacked Walter. Imperium, along with Pete Dunn and Danny Birch, were then a part of the mass brawl which ended the show and some are speculating may lead into war games in November. And that's it for this week's Tenant Talks. I apologise if I've sounded rough or ropey or out of practice it's because i am i haven't recorded a podcast for two and a half maybe three weeks now but do look out for the next nxt uk omnibus that is coming your way very shortly 
Also look out for our next retro review on Union Smack, which will be King of the Ring 1993, as we travel all the way back to the coronation of Brett the Hitman Hart. Look out for the next Union Smack Hall of Fame, where Travis will be inducting Fit Finley. And of course, there will be a special Habiki High Spots for Power Rangers Month, where me and Travis will review Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie. Do look out for that. I'm sure that will be very special. Do not forget, you can log on to our online shop, unionsmack.bigcartel.com, where you can buy the official Union Smack shirt, the official Habiki TMD shirt, the official Reset Button shirt, and now just gone on sale, the official Tenant Talk shirt, the official Union Smack Hall of Fame shirt. They are all there for you to buy. They'll make great presents. Christmas is coming, don't forget, so get over there, grab a bargain while stocks last. All that's left for me to say is you can find me on Twitter at The Perfect Tenant. You can find Travis on Twitter at The Habiki TMD. Stick with the channel for all your latest wrestling news, wrestling podcasts, Habiki Live, Habiki Quickie, Habiki High Spots, Habiki Pro and... Even more Habiki than you could ever imagine in in one place. Also do look out for The Alternative. Colin and Travis will be taking you through AEW week by week. But for now, I will see you on the Union Smack podcast. I will see you here next week. Thank you very much for listening. Good luck, good night, and a very goodbye.